everybody, Infinite Shinjo here, and welcome back to the next episode of Let's Talk Anime. This episode may or may not be number 7, because I honestly don't remember off the top of my head, and I may record and post these out of order than what I intend to, so I guess you really didn't come for an explanation of that, but you got it anyway. So, today I have three more anime topics to share in this video. And the first one is Puzzle and Dragons X. Now, I can't remember who exactly recommended this to me, but I figured, okay, it sounds interesting, I'll watch it. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on like what happens in the episode. I only watched the first episode anyway, so there might be some things that may have been answered that I might have thought wrong in the first episode. Basically, there might be things that I think, oh, it's like this, but then second episode is like, oh, no, that's exactly the opposite of what you were thinking. But basically, and I hate to mention it in this light, but it's not entirely inaccurate. Basically, from what I can understand, Puzzle and Dragons X, or maybe it's Puzzle and Dragons Cross. I'm not sure exactly which one it's supposed to be pronounced as. But basically... It's another video game that was adapted into an anime. You know the ones. Pokemon, um, Bakugan? I think Bakugan. I might be thinking of Beyblade too. Maybe both. And Yu-Gi-Oh! to an extent with the card game. Basically, it's an anime that was adapted from something else. A video game, card game, whatever. And now, it's got its own anime. Now, while I do put that broad term over it, I actually enjoyed the first episode. I watched a dub of it, and I believe that there were a couple of voices that I recognized. I had to look a couple of them up, but one that I remember is the main character, Ace, has the same dub voice as Nishikata in Skilled, Te Skilled Teaser Tagaki-san. You know what? I'm just going to leave that in. But I started watching Tagaki-san early last week, and I started it with the first episodes of the dub just to see how it was. And it's kind of cool, at least for me, that all these dub voice actors can get all these different roles. Now there might be things that were different in the dub as opposed to the Japanese, but I'm not getting on that topic. I just prefer to watch the dub because I can't multitask in watching stuff and looking at the words unless there's no other option other than sub. But the pros that I like from Puzzle and Dragons X, I'm just gonna call it Dragons X. If it's cross, then oh well. But the things that I like is the introduction sequence. It was very well animated. And I don't know what it was in my mind, but I was going into this thinking, okay, it's going to be decent. I didn't expect that much good animation, especially within the first two minutes of the episode. And the second thing, and this might be a dub only thing. It might be only Japanese. It could be both. I'm not sure. But I could hear a lot of the different sound effects that they used in Ed, Ed and Eddie on Culture Network and early Yu-Gi-Oh! for when the monsters were attacking. Even Kawagamon's cry from Digimon, like all those generic monster cries, I just liked that, and that really brought me back to my childhood. And if it's only for the dub, good on them. If it's for both, that's fine anyway. And the third thing, while it's not really a pro, they mention in the first episode that Ace can see drops, and from how they're wording that, I'm assuming that that means normal people can't. So I'm assuming that they would expand on that later. But that's the only real thing that I had like a major question with. The only thing that I didn't like about it is they don't really explain much of the show for people that are just coming into it. But just like I mentioned in past videos, that shouldn't really be that much of a surprise since it's based off of an existing franchise already. But overall, I did like the first episode. It really kept me stuck with it to wonder what was going to happen next up until the end of the first episode. Now, the second topic for this video is Tales of Zestria, the X. I hope that I pronounced that right, but for all I know, 
that could be pronounced Zestria the Cross as well. Everything could just be a cross in this video and I wouldn't know about it. But, I am going to talk about, I think it was actually episode 0. Because when I looked online, the episode listing was like out of order. It had episode 1, then episode 0. But I saw online that episode 0 was basically just like a recap coming into the main series. I only watched episode 0, so if there's anything that I might have missed... Or anything that might be important for later, for episode 1 and onward, then I'm only discussing episode 0, so there you go. The first thing that I like about it is it is beautifully animated and the character designs are great. Now, I know I throw around the word animation, good animation, great animation a lot, but I like the animation for this show. It really sets itself apart with the characters that they're designing. It really sets them apart from other anime that have the basic generic anime character style. Especially The Mist. I love The Mist's design. The next thing is I loved the art and design of the dude that basically looks like a Zoroark. I'm sure there's like an official term for what it's supposed to be, but he had the like the red paint on the side of his mouth both sides of his mouth I guess maybe kind of like a fox maybe like a Vulpix Ninetales sort of thing but Zoroark but I love that guy's design I guess I could just lump that in with character designs but I had it separate and the third thing and actually rereading all the notes that I made for this episode now I'm kind of questioning why I put this under pro but I did when I was watching episode 0 my heart was breaking because like right at the end of it there was a little kid that they met earlier in the prologue and she was trying to run towards the main girl and she you could see the mist behind her and I was thinking no don't let that mist capture her but I'm basically a sap for anything like that I can cry at the drop of a hat I cried while watching Clannad so take with that what you will and the last thing that I liked is the opening song. Now, a lot of the times when I'm discussing stuff like this in suggestions, I normally don't go out of my way to mention, oh, this opening or ending song is great, but I absolutely love this song. I think the first time I listened to it was Mark DeGroote's cover of it from, like, years ago, and I just like the sort of ancient kind of vibe that it has and it really matches with the show. So on to the things that I didn't like about Tales of Zestria the X. The first one is a couple of times in the episode they mentioned the word ley lines but they don't bother explaining what exactly they are until at least a couple of times after mentioning it. Now for me I would have liked it for them to explain what the ley lines are the first time because I think this is based off of a game or something like that as well. So that might be just a thing that everybody should know in a way, I guess, as long as you played the game. But that's really just like a minor nitpick on my part. And the second thing, kind of tying into what I mentioned already in this video, there's so much happening that it's a little bit hard for me to keep up with. Especially within the first episode or the zero episode. They mentioned like a couple of people, one person goes off somewhere else, we got the main girl here, we got these people, and I don't know, it might be just me being difficult to keep up with people's names a lot of the time, but it ultimately comes down to being difficult to just jump into an anime that's based off of something already existing without any prior knowledge about it. Now, to end off this episode, I am going to suggest an anime that everybody should watch. Now, I know at least a couple of times before when I mentioned about an anime suggestion from my own personal experience, I basically say stuff like, you can watch this if you want, if not, then no worries. But this one, I am absolutely saying, you need to watch this. And that is Little Witch Academia. Now, there are probably a whole lot of people just screaming at their laptops or cell phones or whatnot right now 
thinking, but Shinjo, I already watched Little Witch Academia. And well, I'm honestly not going to be that surprised. But the funny thing about it is I just got done watching it maybe a few weeks ago. I don't exactly know why I was so late on the bandwagon of watching it, but I'm late on basically watching everything, so that's not really a surprise anymore. The main character is Atsuko Kagari, or Akko as her nickname is. Way back in the day, she sees a magic show by somebody called Shiny Chariot, and she decides I want to entertain just like that. Basically in the sense of the Yuya Yusho relationship from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, except there's magic involved. But the only problem is Akko can't perform like Shiny Chariot because she doesn't come from a line of magic or wizards. Even without any magic experience, she decides to enroll at Luna Nova Magical Academy. Now right off the bat, I didn't even write this in my notes, but it's too similar for me to just have it skip on by. You could easily draw parallels between Little Witch Academia and Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero Academia. The main character in both has looked up to somebody all their life, but they can't reach that pedestal that they're on because in Akko's case, she doesn't have any magical ability, and in Deku's case, he doesn't have his own quirk. Although in Academia, oh gosh, I just realized they're both going to be called Academia. This is going to be a problem. But in Boku no Hero Academia, Deku meets up with his idol, All Might, and he transfers his power over to Deku. That doesn't happen in Little Witch Academia. I guess you could count this as a double feature, me trying to suggest you to watch Little Witch Academia, and as well giving my thoughts on the series as a whole, spoiler free. But the first thing that I like about it is there are so many references to things in the US. I'm not exactly going to spoil that much of it, but I did watch a video a couple of weeks ago, probably around the time I was watching Little Witch Academia. Apparently there was a cameo with characters from Gravity Falls and Steven Universe in there, and I didn't catch it, and I kind of feel bad. But as well, and the biggest part of it that I even had to share with my friend right when I started watching Little Witch Academia, Shamali has an anime appearance. Shamali from Pawn Stars, he's on an anime. But more on the show, the story of it is just so gripping and entertaining, and you would think that since it's basically a school anime, you would think that it wouldn't be that interesting, but I really enjoy it. Because there's a different adventure each day, and even in a couple of episodes that I noticed, Akko hangs out with more of the side characters rather than the main group of three, which I find very refreshing. And third and most important of all, I just love Akko's character. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It might be just that she kind of reminds me of Alba Suzukaze from New Game. Just that she's kind of ditzy, clueless sometimes, but she knows when it's time to get serious. And the cool thing about it is that while she's kind of annoying to the characters, sometimes she doesn't really come off as like an overly loud character, overly annoying character to the characters in the show and to the viewers. So it's cool that they managed to find that balance with Akko's character. Now the things that I didn't like about it is the length of it. Now for me, I prefer to watch anime that are like 12, 13 episodes just because that's a decent length and not too much time that I have to invest in. And with Little Witch Academia, it is 25 episodes. They had an original 13 and then they tacked on 12 at the end. Now while I'm making a big deal about the show's length, it definitely delivers even though it's twice as long as a normal anime would be. The only other thing that I didn't really like is I could see the plot twist involving Akko and Professor Ursula very early on in the show. It was just so obvious, at least for me. I don't know. Other people might have watched it and didn't catch it at all, but 
I don't know. It might be just me trying to look too deeply into it and thinking, oh, that's kind of convenient. But again, not going to go in detail on what that plot twist is. If you want to find out, you're going to have to watch the show for yourself. That is going to be the end of today's video. Let me know what you think by mock punching that like button and subscribing if you haven't and you want to see more videos like this. Make sure to leave me any suggestions for any discussions for this series down in the comment section below. Let me know if you watched Little Witch Academia and if you did, did you like it? I liked it, but that's going to be it for me, so I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye -bye,